Well, hello. Um, oh, actually, I have to prepare a, a bunch of other things, too. Uh, hold on a second. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to remember all the phones that I've gotten. I thought I had like a bunch of them and I could call this like a lightning round, you know, like, oh my gosh, I'm going to go through all these phones really quickly. Um, but, you know, it turns out, I guess I don't have that many phones to go through, so I'm going to have to go plug some of them in real quick here. All right, um, <laughs> uh, yes, so welcome to this lightning round episode of Phone Home, the show where I only occasionally say what the name of the show is, but that's how it is, you know? Um, today, we are going to be looking at some of the phones that I bought in what I'm going to call a spree, and I'm actually going to try and... Uh, explain to myself why I shouldn't go on sprees and buy lots of phones. Um, and hopefully that'll be useful for you as well, um, in whatever way. I mean, you know, um, it's it can be applicable to a lot of things, you know? So, yeah, so the phone I've just been waving around here, um, this is the LG Velvet. Uh, look, looks pretty slick. They've got the uh, a water droplet camera on the back. That top sensor is some crazy number of megapixels, like 108 megapixels or whatever. And then it bends down. And the other two are a wide and a telephoto, as well as a flash. And they call it a water droplet thing because it's like, oh, look, it's like little droplets on the back of your phone. Um, so, you know, kind of cool. Uh, it's in a case, as you might expect. A lot of phones have this, actually, where, you know, there's a case and, like, you can see notifications through a little thing. Um, but not all of them have this special feature, uh, which I am calling a dual screen. Actually, I'm not calling it. Uh, it's, uh, it's what the case says on it, actually. It says dual screen on there. But um, anyways, so yeah, you've got a dual screen. I've actually, I've got, um, I've got a different launcher on the... Um, on this side here, the uh, ratio, ratio launcher. So it's kind of cool, you know, you can categorize all your apps into different things and you can highlight some of them so you can find them easier. Um, and then you can, you know, have like a full search bar and all that kind of stuff, which is obviously cool just to have a search bar as a little pull to the left. Um, so, you know, I have that and then there's just the standard so that's the dual screen, you know, it's got your standard um, launcher on it. You're just kind of going through all your apps and stuff. Um, but I really, this is just such a cool feature. Like um, here, like you can um, have your messages going on. Let's see if I can find my messages. Uh, it's not important really. Um, but like there's there's tons of uses for it. Like let's say I was in um, a YouTube video. Now what YouTube video should I watch? Maybe something from uh, my own channel actually, because I don't get enough views. And that's not your fault. Uh, that's my fault for not uploading enough. But say I was watching a video about like. Basically, what I figured out is that. Uh, I do not have the old footage for this video. Yeah, so like I'm, you know, I'm watching a video about a phone, and I'm like, oh, I wonder, I wonder if I could like look up some stats about the phone on the other screen without having to close my my video. Like, oh, I wonder what the uh, the megapixels on the camera of this phone are, you know, just as an example. So like I can have my thing here. Find some of it during editing or something like that. But for now, I'm just. I can I can even open a web page in this thing. Look at that. This is the Motorola Z3 Play. And now you might be saying, well, maybe you know, 
maybe that's like a bit too much of, of stuff for me to be doing, you know, all at once. But even just if like a notification comes in, like, you know, if an email or something comes in while you're watching a video, you can kind of skim the email without having to, um, without having to close your video. Like, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe, you know, they say like people are not good at multitasking as a rule. And maybe that's true. I mean, maybe, you know, you would kind of abandon stuff on one screen just because you were working on the other screen. But there are cases where you might actually like that. If you're reading something, for example, it's kind of, it could be kind of neat, you know. Um, I found that it actually works a lot better um, in, lands in a portrait mode than it does in landscape. Um, just because apps get like super wide on this thing and it doesn't really look all that good. It's not very efficient. Um, but, you know, still kind of neat. And then in terms of the phone itself, um, it is actually a regular uh, USB-C port under there. Uh, the case has its own little, um, you know, mag safety kind of chargers. So, you know, it just kind of just sticks right on there. Um, we got a headphone jack, which is in this case horribly recessed, and it's, it's you know it could be difficult to put your headphones in, but um, you know say la vie. And then we've got uh, also a, a hole for the microphone and the speaker over here. Uh, there's a microphone on the top. You got your know, buttons. Um, I had an issue with this when I like just got the case where like I couldn't get the phone to turn on properly. Um, like the phone, you know, the screen was black and I tried, tried plugging it in and didn't do, didn't do anything. I tried to turn it on, tried to hold the power button, you know, press it really hard. And I think, you know, either one of two things happened. Either that was like some kind of weird, you know, first unboxing problem with the case that like resolved itself through use, or I was just, you know, it was a new phone to me and I wasn't pressing the power button correctly. You know, thanks Apple for making me second guess myself on the right way to do something simple like press the power button. Um, I know Apple didn't make this phone, but that's that's like the kind of thinking that they used to promote. Like, oh, you're holding the phone wrong. We didn't put the antenna bands in the wrong place. You're holding it wrong. That's the issue. Um, but yeah, so, you know, just a solid phone. But let me tell you about how I purchased this thing. So, in the US, this is not available unlocked. Just the phone by itself. You have to get it at a carrier. And not only that, but trying to find one of these cases is at a carrier is like pretty, pretty difficult. Like it's hard to do. I ended up getting the AT&T version. It has a Snapdragon 765G in it with the bands for the uh, AT&T 5G, which I think is sub six. So like a little bit faster than 4G, but with better coverage than millimeter wave. Um, but they might have millimeter wave too, for all I know. They don't really advertise it. Anyways, um, so, like, um, I was already out a decent chunk of change just to get this phone from AT&T because I had to not only buy the phone, but buy a couple months of service. Because you can't just, like, buy a phone and, you know, one month of service and then just quit the plan and have the phone. Yet they limit you to 60 days on the plan before you can cancel. So I was out the price of the plan for two months and the price of the phone. And I had to go to the LG website directly to even buy this case. So this was a lot, this was a lot. And it represents a lot of my work hours too because it costs so much. But um, yeah, I haven't, I haven't actually used it as a phone for quite a while because of Numero Dos. Uh, 
All right, we're still rolling. It's been about 12 minutes. Um, the number of numero dos is still charging, so I'm gonna drink some water here and kind of recuperate. Um, okay. All right. I think I'm, I think I'm ready. So the, as you might be able to tell, this thing is enormous and unwieldy and like having a rock in your pocket, like a literal rock that like weighs your clothing down. Um, so, you know, after that, I was like, kind of, digging small phones and they actually came out with the iPhone mini and I was like, Ooh, that seems kind of cool, but I don't really have, you know, hundreds. I don't really want to dump hundreds of dollars on another phone so quickly. Um, so I went for something in the 200 to $300 range, which was this phone for ants. This is a Palm phone. Um, and it looks like an Apple Watch, and it's really tiny. So, yeah, I did legitimately use this for some period of time. Um, believe it or not, it's got, like, um, so that you can just have, like, the traditional three-button setup on the bottom. To like you know open your tasks or go home or go back um, but you also have this little light up guy here and what you can do with that is basically gestures that do the same thing so if I open an app like uh, I don't know, say I open Firefox I'm not sure what I was I had this open to at the time um, but you know if I press and hold on it then I get my task manager view if I press twice on it, I go back to my home screen. If I press it once, I go back. So kind of a neat little feature. Um, it's, I mean, so you have to make some sacrifices to make a phone this tiny. And one of them was that they had to go with a lower powered chip um, just because of the heat concern. I mean, it's thin too. I mean, like, look at this thing, it's so thin. You, you only have space on it for one camera with a flash. You only have space on it for one button. That's the power button, but you can also program it to do other stuff because, you know, they re realize, well, okay, so there's a selfie camera on there too. Um, but like, it's, it's really, I mean, it's small. The SIM card tray is here. 
um, you can just poke that one out. Um, and then on the bottom, of course, the USB-C. So yeah, so it's a 400 series. It's this 400 series Snapdragon, which is, uh, you know, lower numbers are worse. Uh, they've they have taught us this, and and you know, I didn't really try and run any games on this anyway. Like for using it as a second phone that just had you know messages calling and and you know maybe some video calling, it worked perfectly fine for that. Um, I would not use this as my main phone. And in fact, they didn't need originally even try and sell it as a main phone. They were just trying to sell it like, oh, you can have it. It, it could be like a, a phone for when you leave your phone at home. And, you know, it turns out that most people would either have a smartwatch or they would just leave their phone at home and not bring anything. Um, and, you know, there's criticisms of both of those methods, but uh, they kind of realized that and they were like, okay, well, we'll sell it unlocked and you can use it with whatever. So yeah, I used this for a while. It was decent. It was a decent little phone. It was perfect in the pocket. It literally just felt like nothing was in my pocket. It was great. And really that is why number three is a phone that I didn't even want to buy. All right, so you knew it was coming. Um, the phone that I didn't want to buy, uh, yet another example of like a bargain phone, at least relatively. Um, with the with carriers, they have, and I know this because I used to work for Sprint, but um, they have like the technique where they're like, when they're selling you the phone, they're like, trying to add extras because that lets them make more money. So selling phone insurance, for example, or selling you a case or selling you a screen protector. Um, and I did expect to use this phone for at least a couple of months for a somewhat significant amount of time. Um, I didn't let them talk me into the insurance because once you have it, filing a claim is so much torture that you would actually rather just buy a new phone. Um, and to hell with the consequences. But yeah, this is a, this is a Motorola phone. Um, I guess I didn't name all of these. Um, this one, this one is, the, it's fine. Um, this one is the LG Velvet. Uh, this one, as you might be able to guess from the lettering, is the Palm Phone. And this guy here, oh, uh, Palm Phone, don't run away. No, don't run away. Um, <laughs> this is the Moto G Fast. And I, so, okay, let me, let me give you the breakdown. Um, I wanted to switch my phone plan. And, you know, as I may have mentioned, I have two phone plans. Um, one of them is, so what the setup used to be is one of them was like my boring phone plan that, you know, I use with this phone, the Galaxy S10. Just, you know, just kind of boring, but functional and consistent monthly payments, you know, not really changing anything or messing with anything. Um, just if I need a phone, dependable. And the other one uh, was, uh, and then that was a, that's a plan with uh, Sprint, uh, basically, you know, under T-Mobile. Um, and the other one was a company called Red Pocket. Now, the thing about Red Pocket that I liked is that they would sell you a SIM card that would work with any carrier uh, that you could use with any Basically, it meant that you could use any phone you wanted with their plan. And it was like a bargain basement phone plan, too. Like, you can't, like, it has limited minutes and limited texting on it. That kind of limited phone plan. You know, because it's for a second phone. It's for messing around, putting my SIM card, you know, moving my SIM card in and out of all these different phones to test them out and 
use them and that kind of thing. And I decided um, to switch the Red Pocket SIM. I switched the phone number from Red Pocket to Boost Mobile. And it was not for a lack of Boost Mobile trying to stop me. Step one, I ordered a SIM card from Boost Mobile on the internet. Because, you know, who has time to go out to a physical store? Who wants to, like, try and, you know, who wants to risk getting the Rona just to get a new phone? I mean, honestly, like, let's be realistic here. So, you know, hey, I figured it would be easy. And I waited for some time. They have a tracking number on the SIM card, so I'm like watching the tracking. It shows up as delivered, and I'm like, great, my phone's, my, my SIM card's here. Um, I can use it with whatever of these phones, you know, I want. I can just, I can just pop it in. Um, I was planning to use it with the Palm phone, actually, because I was like, oh, the Palm phone is unlocked, you know, it'll work. And I looked at the mailbox, in the mailbox, there was nothing. I looked outside on the front stoop. I looked, you know, like there was snow on the front stoop, but I thought, well, maybe they, you know, dropped it in the snow. Maybe they didn't put it inside. Nope. It was marked as delivered and it wasn't there. So I called up Boost. I'm like, hey, uh, like, I tried to order the SIM card online and it says delivered and I didn't see it. And they're like, um, that's not my department. You have to go to a different department. And they gave me like the extension. They were like, go to extension four, then use options three, three, six. Use option six, six, six. That should have been my clue. Devil worshippers, all of them. Anyways, <laughs> they're not devil worshippers. Don't worry. Um, I was like, okay, I tried the thing. It didn't work. And I'm like, okay, SIM card, 10 bucks. I have 10 bucks. I have 30 bucks and that'll become important later. Um, but anyways, I was like, Oh, you know, who cares? Right. I'll just buy it. I'll just go to the store. And that way, when I buy the SIM card, there's no tracking number. I'll just be able to do it. I will, you know, wear a mask. I'll be protected. I will stand six feet apart. I will, I will just do it just to get the SIM card. And then I can go home, you know, where it's safe and I can, Put it in my palm phone. And so I go to the store, I buy the SIM card, and I go home and I'm trying the palm phone. And the palm phone doesn't work. I'm like, okay, well, I have plenty of phones. So I tried it in the velvet. It didn't work in the velvet. I tried it in the Nokia 8110. You know, they're like, the matrix phone it didn't work and my ace in the hole my trump card as it were was going to be this phone which i bought from sprint so i was like oh it'll work but then i called them up because it wouldn't let me activate this phone on the sim card and they were like oh uh sorry um in in order for you to use uh that that phone with uh this carrier you actually need a different sim card and I was like, okay, all right, it's fine. Um, I'll use the different SIM card. I just want to get my, my Shrinkit plan. And they were like, actually, if you want the Shrinkit plan, you have to buy a new phone. And I was like, so seriously kidding. I don't want to buy a new phone. I already spent all this money on all these other phones recently, and I don't want to do it again. But I wanted to switch to Boost, dang it. Because Boost, you know, it's like the underdog wireless carrier. It's it's in between all of the MVNOs who don't have their own network and offer a bunch of low price plans and all of the network operators like T-Mobile or, or uh, Verizon who have their own network and sell you service on it because they're um, just a little company that has their own network and sell you service on it. 
Um, they don't actually have their own network yet, by the way. They're operating as an MVNO, and then over the course of the next eight years, they are required by the federal government to build out a full 5G network and use all of their spectrum that they've been hoarding and not using for years. Um, but that's a whole other thing. And I was just so eager to jump on this this Boost Mobile thing so that I could have... Um, so that I could have a really great phone in the future. And in order to do that, I was willing to get kind of a crappy phone in the present. And I say kind of, because so far I haven't had too many complaints with this thing. I mean, I, I took some pictures uh, with it compared to all my other phones. and I think I will put them in. I will edit them in um, for you in a second here. And I was like, okay, so like the cameras are not great compared to some of the other cameras that I have on my other phones. But like, who cares, right? If I'm not going to use it for very long. But, you know, I used it for some time. And the thing with the, um, man, I really, I'm repeating myself and this stuff kind of sucks. Um, anyways, so the thing with, uh, with the carriers, like I used to work with Sprint, I know this, um, they try and sell you on the phone insurance and the phone case and the screen protector. And I let them sell me a screen protector and a case because I was like, okay, well, you know, let's face it. Um, I'm going to be using it for a couple of months, you know, not forever because eventually I'm going to have like a 5G phone and that's going to be a completely different thing. And I was like, okay. Um, I will buy a new phone, I will get the screen protector, I will get the case, and I want to port my number over from Red Pocket because it, the number has sentimental value to me because I've been using it for so long. I've had it since college, you know? And the guy at the Boost Mobile store was like, Red Pocket? You want to port from Red Pocket? I haven't even heard of Red Pocket. And I'm like, uh, it's online. And so he goes on his computer and searches Red Pocket. And he's like, man, it is. Dang, they have really good deals. And I'm like, yeah, well, you know. And he was like, sorry, I kind of can't port the number from Red Pocket. And I'm like, okay. And, you know, I'd, been, I'd spent some time on the phone with Boost Mobile. And they had told me that they could port the number over from Red Pocket. So I was like, okay, the guy in the store can't do it. That's fine. I'll call him later. Um, but yeah, we, you know, we got everything set up, um, we put on the screen protector, we put on the case, uh, I got the phone in the car, it, you know, driving on the way home, it, uh, I played some music on it, you know, because I have, uh, Android has this feature called Nearby Share, so basically what you do is, um, you enable location Bluetooth and Wi-Fi on both of the phones. Then you press the share button on the content that you want to share. In this case, it was some music files that I own. I own them, so don't worry about the copyright or whatever. Um, but yeah, so I was sharing the files over from one phone to the other. And, you know, just nearby shared a couple of music files over, listened to the speaker. The speaker was plenty loud. I could hear it over the car noise. I have kind of a quiet car, but anyway. I got home. And... You know, I had purchased multiple SIM cards. I had come this far. I had bought three SIM cards, technically. Um, so that's why I saved the $30. Like, I spent $20 on these SIM cards that I didn't even use because one of them, you know, hadn't arrived at the time and the other one uh, just wouldn't wouldn't work. And the phone that I bought had a SIM card with it, so I, you know, 10 bucks more technically. But anyways, I got home. A few days later, I called up Boost Mobile again, spent about an hour on the line with them, and they ported my number over. Um, so now everything's kind of set up the way I like it, sort of. And yeah, you know, like, this is, this is not a bad phone. Um, up top, you've got a headphone jack. Uh, up down bottom, you got the USB-C, the speaker grill over there. 
the microphone. And uh, on the back, you've got your non-waterfall camera setup. Uh, you can tell it's very different uh, because one of these cameras is the main shooter, one of them's the ultra wide, and one of them's the macro. Two megapixel macro camera. Very useful. Uh, very useful. And the flash, of course. But um, yeah, so you know, cameras, eh, whatever. They're not great. I'm not going to use this thing forever because I developed a plan. And my plan was to buy another phone so that I wouldn't need to buy any more phones. So with, uh, with Phone Home, I actually do these videos uh, and kind of justify to myself that I can sell the phones after I've done a video on them, because um, it would be a horrible waste of, of potential to, to not do it that way. So now that I'm up to date on all these phones, I can start to sell them on the market. And my plan is to sell as many of these phones as I can, get rid of uh, as many phones as I can. Um, the ones that have service on them, the two phones that have service on them, I got to keep those. But other than that, it's open season. I can get rid of basically any of them or all of them and hopefully get some change, some decent, uh, some decent dollarage for them. And then when I have a nice little pile of money, uh, when I'm finally free from the contract on this phone and it's fully paid off, I can close out my account with Sprint T-Mobile. I can uh, drop this phone as well. I mean, not drop, like, like I'm not going to break it by dropping it. I mean, I'm just going to stop using it. Um, but I can get rid of those phones as well. Um, and I will get the kind of phone that will last five years, long enough to uh, see if this Dish Network Boost Mobile thing has any legs. And that is an iPhone. Now you may, say, you may be saying, now hold on there. Don't you know that Android has their own uh, long-lasting phone? A Google Pixel, right? Two or three years. Last two or three years from the date you buy it. Well, that's pretty impressive, I guess. And they said, well, you know, there's Android One phones, right? Android One phones get two to three years. Well, that's pretty good. You know, the iPhone 5S ran iOS 12 years and years and years after it was released. That's the kind of record I'm looking for. And so that means I'm going to iPhone. But it was not a decision made um, lightly. Because, you know, there's a lot of downsides to iOS. You can't customize it as much. You know, that ratio launcher I showed you earlier, that doesn't work on iOS. Um, you can't get all these gimmicky features. The dual screen case or like a modular phone or... A foldable phone? That's not going to be on iOS. Are you kidding? But what you do get is stability. Um, you know, some kind of commitment to privacy, even though really that's a little up in the air. And you also get many years of software support, four or five years, which is pretty good. And with these uh, iPhone 12s, with all the, with the iPhone 12 line, you get all the antennas you need for 5G, which is pretty handy if you're on a carrier that hasn't built 5G yet, but that you're expecting to in the future. So, yeah, basically it just kind of makes sense from that angle. Um, I've got a little stash of money that I've been saving up anyways because I wanted to get a PlayStation. But I think I can probably justify selling a bunch of phones, getting an iPhone with the maximum storage capacity, and driving that thing into the dirt, uh, driving it for as long as possible. And that way, 
I'll be free of all my phones. I won't have to be constantly searching for deals. I won't be switching carriers. I won't be calling them on the phone. I won't be dealing with any of this stuff. I'll just be, you know, an Apple guy. And, you know, I, I, it's not like I haven't already started taking steps in that direction, um, whether willingly or not. Um, so, yeah, when I was working at Sprint, I actually got an iPad. Pretty slick, right? Um, I got it on a deal. Basically, you pay for service, you get the tablet for free. Just because they make a lot of money on the service. <clears throat> but, okay, I got an iPad, right? And not only do I have an iPad, I have an Apple Pencil. So now I can, you know, I'm doing this action. Uh, this pencil is a whole other story. I took a road trip. I'll, I'll tell you about it in a mukbang, uh, or a mukbang, I guess as they call it, later on. But um, anyways, and also my, uh, my employer gave me these. Look at that. Oh, that was an AirPod. AirPods Generation 2. I could do the rest of the video like this, I guess. And that is how Apple gets you a little bit. Basically, once you have one Apple product, every additional Apple product just makes things pretty easy. I mean, you know, you talk, it's, it's a classic example. The AirPods, you literally open the case and they pair with your iPad. Simple as that, right? Just really easy. Or the pencil. I mean, you know, like, well, what are you going to do with a pencil? Well, it makes a nice stylus for when you're, you're scrolling around, or you can use it. You can write in handwriting, and it'll translate it into text, which is kind of a fun way of uh, writing messages to people. So I kind of like that as well. Um, this doesn't work with the iPhone. This is an iPad exclusive. But these, these will work with it. And they have AirDrop. So if I take a picture on my phone, which, let's face it, the phone is iPhone will have a much better camera than the iPad does, but the iPad has a larger screen than the iPhone does. So hey, you know, AirDrop, it's a lot like the Google Play Nearby Share thing. Actually, it's what Google Nearby Share is based on um, without trying to break the law, or maybe they are, I don't know. But yeah, so you just you push a button and bam, blammo. Just, you know, just like that, your picture gets sent right on over. Um, and you can view it on the larger screen. And there's all kinds of synergy stuff that I'm sure I'll discover. But um, I do, I do want to draw some line in the sand. Um, I don't want to start blowing lots of money on Apple products just because I buy one. Um, I think having four Apple products is probably enough for anybody. I already have a nice computer and I'm happy with Windows or Linux. I don't really need, you know, Mac OS that bad, so that's probably fine. And, uh, you know, in terms of like uh, an Apple, you know, the, what are they, what is the speaker called? It's not called it. It's, oh my God, is it an AirPod? Is that right? No, because these are AirPods. Um, uh, that's going to bug me now. What is the Apple Smart Speaker called? I found this on the web. HomePod, yeah. So, like, I'm not going to get a HomePod because I already have a Harman Kardon Invoke. It's, you know, it's the same deal. It's like a smart speaker. Um, I'm not going to get like their overpriced headphones because I already have the Microsoft ones. Um, like, you know, there's a lot of lines that I can draw and I can say, hey, you know, unless something breaks, I won't replace it. You know, that's a mindset that I really admire because you get the most out of your technology. I don't think I've ever run a phone all the way into the dirt. Even something like this, um, when it got cracked, it was technically still usable. I could have just 
slapped like a regular glass screen protector on top of that, and then it wouldn't dig into my hand at all, and I could keep using it. It doesn't harm the visibility that badly. Or, you know, same thing with like the LG G5 that I showed you on my other phone home video. Like, I can, I could have used that further. I could have kept going with them. And I want to. I want to run something into the ground like that uh, because I think it'll finally justify the expense. Uh, because, you know, an iPhone is not a cheap thing. It's very expensive. But, um, yeah. Uh, that's the end of this episode of Phone Home. If we didn't run out of storage, which we didn't. <laughs>